sponsored by the creative and awesome looking 75mm miniatures from Mindwork Games. It's time to throw out your old paints, because we've collected all of the paint brands in the world. It's hundreds and hundreds of paint pots to figure out which paint is the best paint in the world. We've collected the 17 most common paint brands in miniature painting. We're going to do some extreme, immense, backbreaking testing and experimenting. And this is a super scientific test, not at all subjective. So to spare you guys from the boring minutia of this test, I'm just gonna give you a brief resume of what we're gonna test. We created eight categories that we're gonna grade in a scale from one to 10. With the exception of one of the categories, enjoyment, which is gonna weigh double. The brand's face off head to head in an elimination bracket to then meet up at the final battle two best paints against each other I think it's gonna be a super fun challenge. So for the first round we have already made the lottery to see which paint faces off against each other and on the left side we've got P3 versus Nocturna, Reaper paints versus Coat of Arms. Citadel versus Apple Barrel and finalizing everything with Chimera versus Golden. And on the right side we have Green Stuff World versus Monument Paints, Army Painter versus Vallejo, War Color versus Scale 75, and the last battle on the right side is AK Interactive versus Instar. And with that, I think we are ready to start with the first paint pack. So you wanted the right bracket, which yeah. means? Uh, Green Stuff World Monument Paints. And for me, we have Battle of the Crappy Pots. P3 versus Nocturna. So the first one entering the ring is Pro Acryl from Monument Paints. These are paints that we used a little bit before, but mainly on smaller surfaces and just on details. And now we get to use it from start to finish only using that brand. Halfway through painting with the Pro Acryl Monument Paints and the paint containers themselves kinda suck. You end up getting a drip of paint on your fingers as soon as you close them, which is a big no for me. And for some reason, the first layer doesn't seem to really stick on a figure, but after that, it's kinda good. So, kinda conflicted. Despite the issues with the first layer, Lucas was super happy with the end result, and I can't imagine why. The Pro Acryl gets an overall really nice grade, with the exception of the paint pots, which honestly could be a little bit better. And their total score is 67. So I've got Lucas Green Stuff World paints. Lucas, yeah. are you ready? Whoa. And with all of the paints in the palette, Lucas is ready for round number two with Green Stuff World. Unfortunately, these paints covered really poorly from the get go, which made the entire painting process less than fun. I've been painting with the Green Stuff World paints now for about an hour, and I can't stand them. They are terrible. It's like painting with gel, and the paints just float into each other on the wet palette like crazy. This is a nightmare. And despite the nightmare feels, Lucas powered through and ended up with a fantastic end result. And even if the finish is quite nice, it is definitely a little bit too glossy. And their total score is 43. We have a winner from the first bracket, and it's... Monument Paints. Okay, it's time for me to get started with P3 versus Nocturna. And the P3 paints cover really nicely. And most of the paints have really nice tones. But the main issue for me is the way it flows. Because when comparing this to many of the other brands in this test, it doesn't really leave the brush the way that I want the paint to leave the brush. Meaning that painting finer details is almost impossible. Forcing me to use stippling as my main painting technique. In the end, the paints are quite okay. But they really don't tickle that extra fancy that I want for my paints. And honestly, these paint pots are the worst designs in the miniature industry. And despite their shortcomings, have a total point of 58. So unfortunately, the Nocturna paints did not have any white, at least the ones that we have. My idea is to use this uh, Northern Flesh as my kind of brightest highlight on pretty much everything. So I'm just gonna get started and have some fun with the paints. And Nocturna have some of the most lovely color tones that I've ever seen in paints. 
Unfortunately, despite me using the Vortex Mixer, I had a big issue of getting a nice coverage from the paints. Whatever the chemistry is, it's not working to my advantage. And secondly, these paints separated quickly on the wet palette. I don't know why that is, but it happened. And with that though, even if I love the end result and I love the colors, the paints are too runny for me and I did not love working with them. And that definitely reflects on the end score. 45. So my initial thought when I put it up on the palette is this is gonna feel exactly the same as the Nocturna paints, but as it turns out, the P3 was quite a lot more enjoyable to paint with. They covered better, they had a better flow from the brush. So we have a winner in my first round and that is P3. So with the first round done, let me now explain how everything is gonna go down. On each side, we have eight paints battling each other out, which means that we're gonna have eight battles total. Four of each go on to the quarterfinals where Lucas and I switch paints. So if Lucas painted these first, then I'm gonna paint them in the second bracket. But the interesting thing is because we had one paint too much for this bracket, we have a wild card, which is the secret weapon. And the lowest scoring winner from the first round is going to face off the wild card. So that means for the semifinals, there's only going to be four battles and then we go to two battles and then again the final battle which is one paint from the right bracket versus one paint from the left bracket. Next up, Army Painter versus Vallejo. So we have some previous knowledge from the Army Painter that they tend to separate so you need to shake them a lot. And a good tool for that is a Vortex Mixer. <laughs> so I probably shake this dragon red for about 50 seconds on the vortex mixer and it's still separated when I put it on the wet palette. Ooh. But despite that, Lucas have to start painting the minis. And similarly to the Nocturna paints, some of these cover really poorly and Lucas had to go 3-4 laps before he got a nice coverage. Despite having shaken these paints for at least one minute on the vortex mixer, they still separate on the palette, cover like bleep, and it's not fun. The other big issue is the finish. These paints are way too glossy. So they truly get a bottom score in terms of enjoyability from Lucas. But because this is probably the paint brand that's easiest to buy anywhere in the world, and the pots are actually really nice to work with, the end result isn't quite as terrible as you'd think it would be, with a total point of 38. But now, it's time for Vallejo. And from the first brush stroke, Lucas had a lot more fun with these paints. They flow naturally from the brush and they cover really well. Which made him paint not only a lot faster, but it also left him room to be more experimental and paint more fun stuff. So imagine he spent as much time with this one as he did with the previous miniature, but the finish is just so much better. And that is why Vallejo has the highest score so far in this competition, with a total of 77 points. We have a clear winner, and it's not who you think it is, or, or it actually is. Vallejo advances to the quarterfinals. So for the next round, we got uh, a few figures from the sponsor, Mindwork Games, and this one is from The Wizard of Oz, or it's just called Oz, the diorama that you can purchase, but I really love these figures, so it's gonna be super fun. Let's climb it and go. I had never painted with Reaper paints before and this was honestly quite a surprise because I had no expectations on what to expect. It ended up being a lot more enjoyable than I thought it would be. So I'm about an hour in and these paints have a really, really nice flow. I'm really like happy painting this, so that, that makes me happy. The only negative is that we didn't purchase a lot of colors, so I'm a little bit limited in my palette, but they mix quite nicely, so I think I'm gonna be able to do some cool stuff, but it would have been nice with like an orange and maybe some more brown tones, but yeah, I can manage. <laughs> On 
On top of the almost perfect flow from the paintbrush, they also covered really well and looked really saturated once dried. So far this was absolutely the biggest surprise of the day, I just enjoyed these a lot. Only negative, they aren't really readily available for people out there to pick up, at least not here in Europe. Having a super high total of 75 points. So it's time for Coat of Arms, and it's the third brand out of four with the same type of pot, so I don't know really what to expect. A fun thing though with these ones is that this is the recipe that Games Workshop used to use in the early 90s, I believe, so it's gonna be super fascinating to try them out. I do not have high hopes, to be honest, but I really like the tones that they have, which I also did with Nocturna, so hopefully this can surprise me, but it's got a tough challenge. Let's try it out. And just opening these paint pots sent me back 20 years in time, sitting in my boy room painting my first box of miniatures. The smell from these pots are nostalgia in a box. Unfortunately, these have the poorest coverage of any paints I've ever painted with, probably. But when reworking them and adding layers upon layers, I still ended up with something that's respectable. I still kind of want to recommend these paints if you use these paints as a kid because just the smell alone made it worth a purchase for these. But I'm not gonna add these to my regular painting schedule, not a chance. And that is why the total is as low as 38 points for Coat of Arms. So, we have a clear winner, and this time it was Reaper paints. I was honestly quite surprised over how well they were, because I've never tried them before. So, in the next round we have P3 versus Reaper. And with that, it was Lucas' turn to start with the next paint. This time, scale 75. So, I've just started base coating this one, and honestly, these don't really cover. I had much higher expectations for these. I'm kind of confused because everyone raves about these being super good colors and right now they're not covering. I'll check back in like an hour when I've managed to get some more paint on it. So the coverage might limit Lucas a little bit in how he can paint with the paints. But they do mix together incredibly well and they blend really well on the miniature. Lucas also really enjoyed the way that the paint flows out of the paintbrush. So it's not all negative. But as a final note, if you're painting with scale 75, know that these paints are a lot more matte than the other brands that we're testing. Which means that you can't really mix scale 75 with other paints and have them look the same. Meaning that you would either have to finish everything off with a varnish to cover everything with the same finish, or simply exclusively only paint with scale 75, that way you won't have any problem with different satin or matte finishes. The end result looks really good, it's a bit more matte than I usually like, but nonetheless it looks really good. However, the paints were kind of thin, didn't cover really well, but the pigment density is really high, so, so it looks good when it's dried. It's, it's hard to explain. And with that, we have an end result which ends up quite high, even though it had its shortcomings. With a total point of 68. So, you kinda like the Schedule 75s? All in all, yeah. That means that I get to test them next week when we do the quarterfinals video and semifinals. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of happy. So still have a lot of minis to paint, so I'm gonna get at it, but yeah. good luck. <laughs> and with that, we're on to War Color. And for this test, War Color offered to send us a bunch of paints. Unfortunately, they only sent us turquoise and purple colors, but we'll do our best with what we got. And the first impression is, oh my god, these tones look amazing. And everything is set up in tricolor ranges, meaning that it's a great way for a beginner to find out what shadow and midtone and highlight color you should use. The tricky part though, they're using something called a gel medium, which is quite a lot more difficult to control for a beginner. These paints are not at all what I'm used to be painting with. I, I'm having a really hard time figuring them out and it's really hard to paint with them, but then I step away, take it out from the light, and it looks really good. So it, it's a hard one to categorize. I'm just gonna give it a few more hours and give you a final verdict. And with that, Lucas has something that looks amazing. The color layers blended together really well, so everything ended up looking super smooth. But the flow and the enjoyability was quite a lot lower than we had expected, so despite the beautiful end result, they kinda didn't reach the top point that we had hoped for. 
and they get a total point of 57. We have a result between the war colors and scale 75. Drum roll. Even though it was a tight race, scale 75 came out on top. Both me and Lucas were super happy with how the Mindwork Games Minis ended up looking, especially I'm super happy with my robot. Which kind of brings me to this week's sponsor, which is Mindwork Games. And as you've seen in this video, they have a focus on 75mm miniatures, but also on busts. And the cool thing with them is that all of their minis tell so much stories. They have both signature lines with some of the world's best artists, such as Patrick Jones and Brom, but they also have their own line of Mindwork Games unique miniatures. Like the diner at the end of the galaxy. I just love the character of all these minis and it just tells so much of a story. I love it. And I've mentioned this before with larger scale minis is that they are so much better to become a better painter because the sculpting is made with proper volumes and anatomy and the scale opens up for a lot more creativity with painting. So when you go check out their web shop you can follow the link down in the video description and if you buy something during the coming two weeks and use the code written down there you get a really nice discount on any miniature you order. So if you want to become a better painter and get some pretty damn awesome miniatures, go check out Mindwork Games down in the video description. So you guys know that I normally have all of my paints in dropper bottles from Citadel. Unfortunately that's not what they come in, they come in these ones, so that's definitely gonna affect the grade I think. But other than that I'm just gonna get started because obviously I already have experience so I'm just gonna dig right into it and start painting and then give my grades from that. I feel like Citadel often get a lot of flack for the design of its pots and the price. Which to be fair is kind of bad. But now when directly comparing them to other paint brands and painting them one after the other, it's really evident to me that this negativity around the paints is not really fair due to the paint quality. I'm just finished with her and I'm gonna get into painting with Apple Barrel, but I wanna give a little bit of a thought about Citadel because I really like the paints, but there's a big gaping hole in their lineup and that is the white and the black because the Abaddon black just looks, it looks bad, like it's terrible, it's way too glossy. Quark's white is the same, like why can the entire line be good but those two like super important colors are bad. So that's definitely gonna bring down the grades a little bit, but I'm still happy with it. They are a joy to paint with though. They flow beautifully from the paintbrush and the finish has a great mix between matte and satin, making the miniatures look very good with the bare eye. With a quite high total of 69. <laughs> So, on to Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel seems to be the go-to brand for Dungeons & Dragons hobbyists. Especially if you live in America, because here in Europe I've never been able to find them at any hobby store. So my thought was that these would be probably as bad as the IKEA paints that you can buy, like a big pot for a few dollars. Because these ones are pretty much equally cheap as the IKEA paints. But boy was I wrong. So I'm actually quite surprised by the Apple Bear paints, especially considering that these are like paints you buy at a discount at Walmart. So yeah, I'm happily surprised. Definitely not the worst one so far. With that said though, they don't have the best flow from the brush, so sometimes when you're painting finer details they're a little bit more difficult to control. You can thin them down somewhat and use a smaller brush to get in fine details in there, so in my opinion they are honestly a fantastic, great starter set or a good kit to buy for a younger person who's just getting into the hobby. With a total point of 59. This battle was honestly a lot tighter than I thought it would be. Despite the pot from the apple barrel being better and the gloss and finish is pretty much equal, the Citadel was more fun to paint with because it has a better flow and a little bit more pigment density. Citadel is the one that moves forward to the next round. So next battle, AK versus Instar. Just like with Warcolor, AK Interactive actually sent us these paints for the test. Unfortunately, they only sent us pastel colors, which makes this kind of exciting. <laughs> Luckily, our local store Fantasia had a couple of these paints in so we could make the range big enough for us to actually paint the miniature and have it have a shadow and a highlight. 
And these paints, they flow fantastically from the paintbrush. And the coverage is probably one of the best that Lucas had in this entire painting challenge. And what Lucas managed to mix together and paint with that limited palette is just amazing. It would have been super fascinating to see what he would have been able to make with a full entire range of paints. With an incredible total score of 74 points. I just finished painting with the AK Interactive paints, they were really nice. And now I'm moving on to the Instar paints. And take a look at this. That is what I call massive separation between the medium and the pigment. So these are gonna need some proper shaking. Most of these paints are single pigment paints and really high in pigmentation so that you can mix them together and create most of the colors. Wish me luck. And even if the paints have beautiful pigmentation, there were some major downsides to the Instar paints. The first one being that they are super glossy. And sure, you can add a matte medium to it to make them look more matte, but that also feels like you're changing the properties of the paints. The second thing is the coverage and the way that it flows. It's definitely more like a regular classic acrylic ink than an actual paint. Making it super difficult to control on your miniature and again kind of reinforcing the part where you need to add a different medium to it to make it work the way that you want it to work. But because of how flowy they were, Lucas also managed to get something that looked super smooth. So the end result is really a little bit everywhere. Some parts were not as good as we wanted them and some parts were way over expectation. Scoring somewhere in the middle with a total of 50 points. So, the question you've all been waiting for. Was it AK Interactive or Instar? Airbrush ready, brush ready. But the question is, are we ready? And the answer is, no. AK Interactive advances. So this is kind of the test that I'm most excited about because it's the super hyped Chimera and I've never tried them versus golden and I've never tried them either so I think it's gonna be super fun let's do it and right at the start I felt that the camera paints was right up my alley they had a really nice flow from the brush and I could keep on painting for longer periods without having to refill the brush and speaking of the pigments these have probably the most vibrant finish that I have ever seen I know this is a personal thing, but for me, these were just super lovely. So the Chimera paints were honestly surprisingly fun to paint with. People talk about them in a positive manner, but I did not expect it to be this much fun because the colors are super vibrant, they're super easy to mix, and they're a lot of fun to paint with because they flow nicely from the brush. There is one issue though, and that is these paints are not beginner friendly because you have to mix your paints. Because there's just like, what, 20 paints to select from. Even I felt like it was a bit of a problem sometimes to find the color that I was looking for, but I managed and it was a lot of fun. So I'm giving it quite high grades, but again, with that caveat, it's probably not for everyone. Scoring my highest total so far with 78 points. And with that, on to my final challenge, the Golden Paints. So Golden have two different type of pots and I'm going to use both when I'm painting. One of them is like a high fluid, uh, which is already like pre-thinned and it's very liquidy. And the other one, is regular acrylics. So I'm gonna do a mix of both and see kind of how they work and how they match up to Chimera. It's a tough match. And I started off this test with the high flow acrylics, which in hindsight was kind of a bad idea because I could not make it work and it did not end up looking the way that I wanted it to look. So a quick initial impression, these ones were far too flowy and they have an issue that they are like super high gloss. So they are not meant for miniatures, which was kind of apparent. These ones on the other hand, these look 
freaking great and they flow really nicely. It's a bit of a bummer that I don't have more than a red, yellow, blue and green. So it's gonna be a little bit rough, but in terms of feel, they feel really good. But then when I shifted to the SoFlow paints, it was a completely different story. And I cannot understand why we as miniature painters are not talking about these paints more because these are wonderful. Okay, final impression, the mini is done. Like the paint flows from the brush so smoothly. The white was super nice, the black, the like all the colors were really nice. So I gotta figure out if they have more colors than just like the base ones because these were really nice. So I can recommend them, but kind of gotta figure out because of their limitations, if they are better than Chimera, which was pretty freaking awesome as well. And in terms of paint flow from the brush, I think these might actually be my favorites so far. Which also is why they have a crazy high total of 71 points. So I did look it up and Golden does have a lot of colors in the range, but despite that Chimera had a little bit higher score. So the one that moves forward is... But with that said, the Golden is probably the highest scoring one that didn't made it to the next round and has a lot higher score than a lot of the other ones that made it to the second round. So they're definitely worth checking out. It's time for Secret Weapon. The Secret Weapon paint range is originally made for mecha miniatures, which means that the color selection is probably not what you would see normally with people who paint fantasy or realistic miniatures like we do. With that said though, the colors look really nice. The flow from the brush is above average, and the coverage is honestly quite nice. And even if it's not among the highest scoring, we were still happy painting with these paints. And the finished result I think speaks for itself. So the secret weapon paints, even though they had a quite limiting paint range, I actually enjoyed painting with them. They got a really nice finish and the end results look really good, so overall a pretty good experience. And our secret weapon actually scores quite high with a total of 65 points. This was crazy fun. Very much fun. Which one was your two favorite painted minis? I would probably say the Mindwork game Dorothy. Dorothy, yeah. yeah. And the Oz, yeah. And I don't know. It's either between the Gravedigger or the Captain. Or the <laughs> Vampire. <laughs> I kind of I like the robot as well from Mindwork Games. Yep. I do really like my vampire with the glowy light. I also like the ogre, even though I was not a big fan of the paints. I think that's my three favorites. Oh yeah, I like my ogre as well. It's fun to paint minis. Speaking of uh, painting, we tried some paints, and there was a lot of surprises. I would say, which one's your your biggest surprise? I would say I haven't really painted with Army Painter before. Yeah. So, so that was kind of a surprise because uh, you hear yeah. a lot of bashing on them and yeah. Terrible experience. Yeah, and the thing is, we've been using a lot of the like airbrush paints, yeah, like those. And so they're good. Yeah, they're good. They're really good. So this was kind of a surprise, I guess, for you. I haven't uh, done that heavy testing, so I'm not entirely sure. My biggest surprise, I would say, golden. I did not expect them to have that nice of a flow and coverage. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm a little bit disappointed. We only had like four colors plus black and white. The biggest disappointment for me would probably be. Nocturna, because I thought they would be up there with like Citadel and Vallejo because yeah. like the colors look so amazing. They're vibrant, they have really nice selection of colors, but I did not enjoy painting with them. Personal thing, probably, I don't know, others probably love them, but for me that was uh, not my cup of tea. I was pleasantly surprised by AK as well. They yeah. were really similar to perhaps Vallejo, yeah. but a bit more matte finish. Even though we only had the pastel colors, yeah. they really covered pretty good for being that bright. We had a lot of fun painting these uh, paints, as you might have seen, because the end result, on like even the worst colors, yeah. I think the minis ended up looking amazing. So I think with that, you can also take away that you can get good result even with uh, the paints that are cheaper, but also know that we had a lot more fun with the paints that were better, yeah. that had better flow. Sure. If you want to enjoy painting more, then maybe buy better colors, but like it's not the end all be all. As a final kind of funny thing is that we did find that Secret Weapon had a higher score than the lowest scoring one that went to the second round, and that was P3, which means that P3 is not going to be part of next week's video. Just the semi finals. But which paint that's gonna make it to the next round, you won't find out until next week. So with that said, thanks again Mindwork Games for sponsoring this video and all of our patrons of course who every week pay my salary, which is amazing. A special thanks to all the top patrons. With that said, have a great day. Bye bye.